This video will walk you through how to select a controllable wraparound heat pipe on Select Plus. Here I have a project called University of Washington Lab. I've already pre-selected my wraparound heat pipe, a fin height of 30 inches, fin length of 50 inches, 9179 entering, 5554 leaving. Now I'm going to go ahead and click calculate. And you'll see that my 91 is dropping down to 80.4. I'm cooling down to 55, and I'm heating up to about 66 degrees. The problem is, this being a lab, I'm looking for a max leaving air temperature of around 62 degrees. Now there's two ways I could do this. I could either lower the heat pipe performance by going down in the number of rows or the number of fins per inch. That will get me down to 62. The problem with that potential solution is I lose the performance at all other temperature ranges. So at part load conditions, I'm getting less performance. Another solution would be to add control valves to the wraparound heat pipe to limit the heat pipe performance. In our case, we use normally open solenoid valves. That is, that when you send power to it, it closes the valves. If you don't, it remains open. And what you could do is you could actually limit the heat pipe performance. So at this 9179 design condition, you can actually turn off a stage or two to get you back down to the 62 critical temperature you're looking for. To add control valves to the heat pipe, go ahead and click Reselect. Now back at the input screen, you're able to add control valves to your selection. So at the controllable part right here at the top, go ahead and click either 24 VAC or 120. Now the program will automatically switch to 120 normally open solenoid valves when you exceed 22 valves. That is for larger systems, after 22 valves, the transformer size gets a little larger and it ends up being more costly. So the program will automatically switch you to 120 volt. But this being a small system, let's go ahead and click 24. And now you have an option that appears for the number of stages. You can either choose between three or four stages. Now what we'll HPT will do is we'll actually group these solenoid valves into various stages and wire these to a terminal strip. Now for example, if you select four stages, you essentially have 25, 50, 75, and 100% fully off control. So depending on how you want to modulate the heat pipe performance will determine the number of stages you select. So for this example, let's just go ahead and select four stages. After clicking Calculate, you'll be able to view the performance data of the controllable wraparound heat pipe. One thing you'll notice right away is the performance is slightly lower than the non-controllable option. You'll notice on the reheat side, before we had a 66 approximately leaving air temperature, now we're down to 64.1. This is due to the control valves adding a small resistance to the refrigerant flow in the wraparound heat pipe, thus a small degradation in heat pipe performance. However, with this example, we wanted a 62 degree leaving air temperature, thus we still will need to turn off one or two stages to get you back down to the 62 degree critical air temperature. Now, I want to go ahead and show you the drawing, and you get to the drawing by again hitting continue, because the drawing is slightly different than the non-controllable U-frame. Go ahead and click continue. Now at the drawing screen, you'll be able to view the selection we just made for the two row controllable U-frame wraparound. One dimension I want to focus on is this 5 inches, which again is the dimension for the connecting tubes, which is piped around the U-bend side of your cooling coil. For the standard non-controllable U-frame, this dimension is usually 2 inches. Now that we've added normally open solenoid valves to the wraparound, this is going to take up a little more space, thus why this dimension increased to 5 inches. Now another thing that changed is the addition of these pigtails. Now all the normally open solenoid valves are wired and grouped into three or four stages. This pigtail will wire into a terminal strip, which is provided by HBT, and that terminal strip will sit in a NEMA 3R enclosure, which is also provided by HBT. Now I want to show you a little more details on what we actually provide, so I'm going to end this selection by clicking Save and Close. Now back at the project schedule screen, I want to show you how to output a submittal. It is a little different for the controllable option because it will have a couple extra pages detailing the number of control valves, the NEMA 3R enclosure, as well as even specifically the type of normally open solenoid valve we use. To output the submittal, all you got to do is click Submittal and click Save to PDF. And a document will download to your browser, so if I'm using Firefox, it's going to download to my Downloads folder. And I've actually done this already, so I'm just going to go ahead and click here and open this. 
and here is my project submittal. Let's go down to 100% so everyone can see everything. And the basic pages that we've seen with the non-controllable. Now this is one page that's different. Now this will show you actually the number of control valves, 8, the 24 VAC, the number of stages, as well as it'll even show you how we wire it to the terminal strip. So approximate recovery capacity, as I mentioned, 25, 50, 75, and 100% fully closed. The next page is the NEMA 3R enclosure that HPT provides. This is details on the normally open solenoid valve we use. As well as the last page, which is in all cases, will be our warranty page for the heat pipe itself. Here ends the controllable heat pipe selection video. I would encourage you to check out our other videos on our Select Plus channel and feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Have a wonderful day.